Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number three of our official series, where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. Server and Discord links, as always, are in the description. Also include some timestamps for those different tracks in the video, so feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. We're actually going to be starting out today on our really fun and beloved map, Lime Rock. Uh, I wanted to start off this video actually with this interesting start slash chase. So we talked a little bit about it last video, uh, but I just kind of wanted to show what it might look like where, you know, you're really behind on the train, but you're still trying to catch in a little bit of that gap. I know a lot of people will just try to straight, uh, basically just try to catch up by straightening. Uh, but here, you know, I'm taking some decent lines. I would say also I do have someone behind me, right? So I want to be a little bit, uh, I guess cognizant. I don't know if that's too big of a word, but, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, people behind me can drift as well. And I'm not just being a menace in the server. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to just see a little bit of that walk up that I've kind of described and really for people to see it in action. So finally, looks like we're finally caught up a little bit, trying to get into the groove of the train especially as a new train member, uh, want to be a little bit careful and not go super uh, hard and aggressive and, and kind of ruin what's going on with that flow. So I'm just trying to catch it, get in that groove with everyone else. And I think right about here, we finally get there. Sometimes though, I will say like, if you're you know that far behind and it just seems like it's really, you're not catching up, not a bad idea just to reset and uh, try to catch back up at the start or, you know, wherever the pits are. Also, one thing I made a uh, lime rock a little bit longer because I wanted to mention my last video, I had talked about how OTM reg, uh, I think I said top three, maybe top five on the leaderboards. I think I said a AC ACS server. Well, I have official word. Uh, it looks like he has confirmed that he is actually now the number one on the leaderboards for the AEO uh, server. And uh, yeah, he said it was like around 1.2 billion, which is crazy. I want to say, I'm pretty sure he said he was drifting for a solid four hours, which that's just insane to me, dude. I, I, guess, <laughs> I guess there's some techniques. I don't know. I don't know uh, his special sauce, but... Yeah, just so everyone knows, for the record, now we know. Uh, if you need any lessons from the boy, he's the number one. Online rock, anyway. <laughs> I mean, good driver regardless. But here we have a different train. So now that we've done our little catch up, wanted to do a little bit more of just the vibe. I think it was like a five person train or so. This was our first day on Friday, our first track. So everyone's just trying to warm up. For, for me, for sure, I, I think I was a little bit rusty. So here I'm just kind of keeping a little bit of space, just filling it out. I don't think I had done a ton of laps at this point. So I'm just trying to tuck in a little bit, get a sense of the guy in front of me. I, I don't think it's a, a name unless I can't see. Yeah, I don't think I've drifted with a uh, lone wolf before. Definitely Pez, AKA P3, but uh, I haven't drifted with this guy much. Actually, after this last weekend, I have now, I will say. But yeah, just trying to, you know, keep it cool, keep it smooth. I'm kind of being that shock absorber for the uh, the people behind me and not trying to let too much, too much of that proximity go. But yeah, this is also, like I mentioned before, a really good track to, to warm up and kind of get a little bit prepared for more advanced slash intermediate tracks. It's really good for, you know, I think I said before though, for transition and, and proximity practice. I really like this map. I mean, I, I guess I probably said that too many times, but yeah, it's also getting way harder to uh, edit these videos. There's been so many good times. I'm, I'm super struggling. Now this is a, this is actually a track. I don't know if a lot of you guys know of, it's called CG Segoya Park. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. Now, what's really cool is there's actually markers on all of these outside zones. I, th I want to say there's maybe one or two kind of inside zones. 
But this track is really unique where it's kind of a very long and flowy track and it can feel really nice or it can punish you pretty hard if you're not taking the proper lines. And luckily with the way that this track was designed, um, shout out to CG, of course, they did a really good job of actually where these markers are. I know sometimes it just doesn't feel exactly right or especially for trains, like it just, the lines don't really make sense. They're m more like competitive lines, I would say. So with these, it's actually really cool. You can follow those uh, little markers really well. This entry point, you kind of want to throw it in. Uh, I, I think I'm being a little bit more tame here, but you kind of want to throw it in and trust the car. Let the grip kind of grip you through that corner. You don't need an e-brake entry or anything like that. Uh, I think if I watch the pedal cam properly, a little bit of left foot brake, nothing too crazy. Just trying to stay, keep up here. Again, this is our, our second track of the day, so... I'm filling out the lobby, uh, trying to see how I'm going to drive for today. That transition on the track cam was absolutely insane too. But here, right that inside clip, you want to kind of go over it. This will set you up really nice for this part. You can see there I was, a, well, actually really, really shallow, but I was just having a little bit of struggles with the uh, back and forth. Uh, there was a little bit of gaps or maybe some, a little bit of a, a battle up front so i'm just kind of staying back not going too crazy now here i actually captured or at least edited in uh this really cool like big big train is really cool to see and again like i only scrubbed through these a, a little bit and i don't have the i don't give myself the opportunity to watch it in normal i guess speed so it's always really fun to, to watch and you can kind of see a lot of good matching angle a little bit late on my transition there too you can kind of see it in the first person view as well as the track cam and also if you're still in this video uh definitely stay tuned for some segments that are going to be coming up later i actually have been listening to a lot of feedback about the fov uh and even actually the the graphics a little bit so i think actually after this track you're going to see my fov finally change so definitely know, let me know what you guys think if it's a little bit better to view. Uh, it definitely has helped me with my proximity, I noticed. I think it has to do something with when a car is close to you and especially like for drifting where you're you know, sliding back and forth basically, like with the neck FX, right? It looks like they're a little bit closer than they actually are. And I feel like once I had made this FOV change, uh, this is actually my second one. I think I started with 85. This was around 80, maybe. Uh, I think I've changed it now to 65. We'll see after this track, but... But yeah, it's actually made a really big difference. So hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to continue to kind of mess with that and then maybe give some insight in, on uh, how I feel or what, what I think is best. But now this track is really cool. So this is a, a newer Mac uh, from Permatracks called Hadi, Hadi, Hadishi Tengoku. Oof. If you're a native Japanese speaker, I'm so sorry. I definitely am trying. Uh, very small uh, track. Reminds me of Seca Hills or Sika Hills. Man, I don't know. I don't know why I try, but uh, this part's really interesting. You go outside here. Now, they started hitting it like this on the outside before they were taking on that uh, initial... Uh, inside corner, I guess, on the right-hander. But here, this is definitely one of those tracks where it's about maximizing the space that you have and kind of making it work. I, I, I'm I, not going to lie to you guys. I struggled so hard with this one. I mean, this was my... Well, obviously my first time on the track. But yeah, like this one is definitely... It feels really small. But near the end, it, it kind of started making a little bit more sense. And definitely, you know, following the OTM members like Mods, Turbo, Reg. And actually, there was a, a couple other people in the lobby that were picking up the lines really quickly. But yeah, you can see here, they're taking these really far, long outside lines. I'm not sure if they had driven this before. I can't, can't really remember. But you see there, I, I also wanted to add that in. Uh, sorry, Turbo, for, for having that there because he's a sensational driver. But basically, I just wanted to show, like, I did have contact with him and he tried to fix it, but he kind of recognized pretty quick that he, he couldn't fix it and he did a, a reset you know, almost immediately not to mess anyone up. So I thought it was a really good example to show 
of like what you should probably be thinking about and and like the quicker you are on a reset definitely can make a really big difference and uh i didn't deserve it but like i didn't deserve him resetting for me but it was my fault so luckily i think we're friends so i, I think it's okay but we are now on nico circuit this is also a track i haven't showcased yet on these weekend streams uh or at least on these weekend recaps this is a very fun track very fast track now i'm going to kind of talk through it on this next lap here and as i mentioned yeah i had a lot a lot of times with lone wolf here so kind of take this in, inside corners of the chicane here a lot of people take this different but i typically go a little bit wider out than maybe lone wolf did then tuck a little bit near these inside uh zones right here if i can inside zone here stretch this out a little bit of left foot break goes a really long way take the inside of these rumble strips <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and then uh here a little bit of a manji go i think it's outside and then go a little bit in right there try to stay like rear tires not past that outside rumble strip and then here it, it's crazy man there's so many different ways to take it uh i it's really hard not to go off track you could see there i wanted to showcase two lone wolf doing a really good job of saving a little bit of a mistake and, and saved it no problem here here we'll see another look with lone wolf in the lead but our boy otm reg number one on lime rock uh drift score servers servers with that number one just for well anyway um we're just trying to follow his line i'm trying to follow i guess really like reg is doing a good job of emulating what lone wolf is doing but for me like i am used to driving with reg quite often i think at, at this point but really like because he's trying to emulate the lead it does make things a little bit different than maybe what i'm, I'm used to so i'm giving a little bit of extra space but yeah, here going, really trying to maximize those outside zones. And then you can really extend this out. I think uh, Reg might have took it a little bit shallow there. I don't think that was in any of fault of his own. I think he was just following the lead. But typically, you want to extend that on the outside. And right here, uh, I think Turbo has a little bit of a modified line compared to most people and definitely myself. Uh, I don't know if I would say I know this line very well. Uh, He's actually, I've, I've done a lot of following with him. Seems like his line is pretty good, but it's really fast. So it, it definitely, uh, when you make a mistake, you just get dusted. You can almost see it here. And he even goes outside those rumble strips. I, I wish I knew this track enough to really give recommendations on this line, but definitely I hope we uh, drive it more and I can give a little bit more feedback on what I think works or not. But now we transition to Muscleman. Now... I'm going to say this, but I, I got to be honest. This is technically a home track. It's located here in Arizona. Uh, it's in Tucson, so it's not, not my home city necessarily, but it is like close, right? It is in my home state. I have driven on this track IRL a few times, maybe like two, three events max on a very low horsepower car. Uh, OTM did really, really a fantastic job with this track. I will say like a lot of people might be put off by the lower res, but uh, really like the way that the track was built is very, if not exactly uh, a replica of this Tucson track. But also there's a, there's a lot of little things that are somewhat modified IRL, depending on like how they run their different events. So let's kind of like talk through a little bit about what this track's going to look like for, for you guys. So. This is what I was learning. I actually wanted to do, I hope, yeah, I, I did two lead runs so I could kind of talk you through it. So here, most people don't this uh, IRL, but uh, big reverse entry. I don't know if I'd call that reverse entry, but uh, like kind of kind of a big throw in there. Some, some people IRL will take it a little bit slow. You kind of walk this little white dotted line you see there. You want to take this on the outside. Now, one of the advices that I got from the OTM uh, gang or team, I should say, is like these little like you see these inside zones how there's a, those little red markers you kind of want to think about placing your car there i wanted to modify this line and see if there was a better line but it did feel like the more that i respected those i guess uh marking points or clipping points I'm not sure how you want to describe it the the better the track did feel and the more that it flowed so 
I wish I could say I was good at this track because it is my home track. I feel like I have to, but it is still something I'm learning. And it's been really fun with these cars, especially driving, like kind of remembering like what it is in real life. And I will say those mountains, I mean, it really does look like that in real life. The only difference is it's not cloudy in Arizona almost ever. So it's just like a bright, hot, I think it's like a hundred degrees right now currently, but but yeah, big entry. And, and I also wanted to comment on this too. If you're driving this track with new people, if you're driving this track for the first time, I would definitely suggest maybe not going super ham if you have someone right behind you on that entry, especially like, probably want to give a little bit of heads up. Definitely like IRL, right? Uh, you, you would tell someone like, hey bro, like I'm going to be throwing some backies or whatever if you've been tandeming for a while or maybe if you're in like a three stack or, or a bigger train. Probably wouldn't do it in a train, but you want to let them know like, hey man, like, you know, I'm going to throw it in because they're really not going to expect that. I mean, it, you're going to slow down naturally quite a bit too. So you're doing a little bit of Manji, trying to stay close to Reg. His lines, of course, are really good on this track. It, it was actually really helpful. The I think the server was a little bit slower around this time. So I, I actually had a lot of opportunity to just work on my lines really by following reg which was super helpful and a little bit of advice from uh from chat from the boys in chat that might not have been sliding but you can see here if you take that initiation or that first corner a little bit wrong you see how much far out reg is uh, i'm even like cutting these amount of lines to try to just catch back up to him i've noticed a, a couple times people here that really like wide outside long corner the one that we just came from into this more like chicane area a lot of people will just try to dive in i totally get it from a proximity point but definitely when you do that uh it sets you up really poorly so maybe try to be careful of that and just try to focus on if i can keep my proximity on the initiation you're not gonna have to work as hard through the rest and if you are gonna cut that big sweeping area you can cut without too many uh too many risks or too many issues within reason right i can just imagine someone like just cutting the line basically going straight i mean no one no one that's watching this video right anyway uh we're now switching to motor park kazan you know someday i'll, I'll know these names well but this track again, I think last time, uh, did we end up on this track? Was this the last track that we were on? I'm, I'm not sure, but we have driven this. So I did say like I was starting to enjoy it and uh, I, I wanted to really see myself on this track more. I definitely continue to still enjoy this track. There's a lot of uh, unique challenges. I think the, the biggest one for me is trying to figure out this line that's coming up right here where you go a little bit of Manji into this big wide sweep here messing it up but really trying to stay not um trying to stay on the outside and not cut it in and i can just maybe comment now that i feel a little bit more comfortable on this uh unlimited by the way doing a fantastic job this man just like he ran through this track like it was nobody's business it, it was crazy I, I it was actually insane i i think he is a specialist at these more like japanese tight tracks i'm, I'm not sure if this is like a japanese track but these more like technical tight tracks, really, really good driver, really good for me to follow actually too. So these outside zones, these little clipping points are actually very helpful for you to follow and kind of think of. I think the line that he's taking here is basically the one you want to take as well. I'm working on just trying to stay close to his door, try to emulate his lines here. Again, practicing this big long sweep and see here finally hitting it. Look at that not bad man hitting it on the outside not cutting in too much but keeping that proximity in i think that the new fov change here really made a massive difference like i really can't overstate that i, I didn't even know it was going to matter that much but here we are but here you know i hit both of those zones missed that third outside zone nice transition here again just trying to stay within prox of him i am taking a little bit more shallow points here uh I'm not sure if I really have a great reason. I think this this last Friday, it was just a little little bit light, which honestly, guys, like I, I'm not complaining with. I, I definitely like more people, the better. I genuinely enjoy when there's just, you know, a ton of people sliding. But in times like this, it's always a 
a good opportunity for me to really get more familiar with someone else's drifting style or improve my own. And this is a track that I definitely needed that time. So really thankful to, to have that time and to have someone like Unlimited that's just throwing these spicy leads. So one thing I wanted to comment on here as well, um, this is kind of more of just like some feedback of like general drifting etiquette. I would definitely recommend like if you see a train, uh, especially when, you know, people that you don't know, and even maybe if you do know, try not to take the lead. Uh, if someone wants to give a lead, they'll, you know, if they want to give up their lead rather, they'll reset or jump out the train and then join in the back or something like that, or do like a switch, which we've talked about before. It's not really great in trains, but really like when you do that, you have a high potential of messing up the train, unless you're confident. Uh, sometimes it can work, but I've seen also sometimes people jump in front. No one really follows you. Cause it's like, Hey, who is this guy? So really like, I would say if you see a train jump in the middle of it, jump in the back of it, just kind of fill it out, see how it is. And then I think, you know, the longer you can stay in the train and keep the train going, naturally you're going to end up with the lead. So don't rush into it. And, and I think it's really important that you respect the train in that way. But kind of my personal opinion, maybe I've been thinking about making like some type of etiquette video. I don't think a lot of people are used to IRL uh, drifting or like maybe the etiquette that comes along with like actually having your car that can get broken by someone else. Anyway. This is now Saturday. We are back on Lime Rock as we seem to always do. Now you guys are going to have to tell me, uh, you're going to see here. I think after this run, I changed a little bit more of the graphics. So I initially had changed the graphics here and I think I changed the post-processing filter and then I changed again. Uh, it seems a little bit darker, but I'm almost think it's actually the weather and not necessarily like an issue with the filter because I, I was i was actually setting uh the filter to like more of these like dark scenes which is i think this is just like a cloudy or like scattered overcast which was nice without any filter i think i was running like stock pure but now that i switched it you're gonna see i think after this run um it goes really dark also shout out to uh snox coming in i haven't had a lot of drive time with him i was really scared to hit him actually here i don't know if it's obvious but yeah i was just kind of hanging back trying to be consistent not messing anything up here's where our new filter comes into play i think it'll be here for the rest of the video i know it's a little bit jarring but i, I was messing with that at the beginning so i didn't have to mess it with it in the middle so definitely let me know what you guys think i, I want it to look good for people watching and i also i'm really trying to find this mark of like realism and uh I guess there's more realistic because I feel like the more realistic I can get this, the more immersive it'll be. And then, you know, therefore the more fun it'll be. Maybe it's just me. That's just kind of like what I'm aiming for. So if you guys have any like feedback or suggestions, I also did update the, the bit rate or the quality settings, I guess for stream. So now we're watching at a much higher quality. So hopefully it's also more fun to watch. So I'll keep on trying to iterate and improve, make it a fun experience for everyone during the streams or of course here on YouTube. But we are now following 40, as you guys all know, very consistent. Now you can see a little bit of left foot breaking there. The nice thing and, and something to maybe keep in mind for those of you that are in these chase positions is just because you see brake lights doesn't mean you're going to see heavy braking, but it does obviously mean there, there's some braking going on. I definitely would recommend, this seems like it's more of a car X habit than it is like an Assetto habit of not using your left foot brake during transitions. That was something that I actually had to learn how to do when I was in car X. Then I then had to break the habit of, which was extremely hard. But once I did, or I have gotten better at it, which I'm not perfect at it still, um, it's felt much better. And the transitions are a lot more smooth. I guess maybe it's kind of hard to explain. If you've played car X, you probably understand what I'm saying, but the smoothness that you get in car X, you can get in a set without having to be on your left foot break. That's what it comes down to. Now we're switching over to shadow Valley. We got our good friend Turbo in the lead. There was a little bit of rubber banding issues. I'm not sure if these runs are going to have any of those prevalent ones, but I did pull a little bit away at some sec uh, sections or really like in general. I, I think it, it depends. Like it felt like it was good and then it wasn't. But another thing to think about, like if you guys are seeing a little bit of lag or someone that you're trying to follow, 
like unfortunately you are going to have to give a little bit more proximity to that person just in case but again a great opportunity to work on being consistent emulating them working on your transition uh timing all those things even though you're not right on their doors they'll kind of help you skill up for when you can be you know whether that's that person after they have their internet issues fixed not that turbo has any internet issue i'm just saying um or when you like you know have someone else that you can drift with you're still like honing your skills as you go so here i'm just practicing staying as close as i can that i felt comfortable with trying to match his angle you can see maybe i'm a little bit shallow it's hard to tell and a little bit of a hesitation you could see i was late on my transition there so he kind of got away from me and that's something that we talked about our last weekend recap right thinking about your transition timing when you're on time you're going to be in the pocket when you're not in time you're going to be way far away they're going to gain a lot of uh distance from you and you're going to feel like you're always trying to catch up so really uh it's fun to watch but definitely think about it while you're watching you're going to see moments where there i have a little bit of slow transitions and i think most of the time you're going to see immediately i lose a lot of that uh that proximity Bad Turbo doing a good job. Here, I always try to aim for the inside zone right there. Sometimes I go a little bit out here. I've noticed if I go too far out on that section, though, it slows up the rest of the, the train for everyone. Here, you can pretty much run the outside. Transition spot about, you know, where Turbo is. You can run this on the outside as well. I wouldn't cut it in too hard, but you can a little bit. And then I try to... Wow, Turbo's like right on that white line. Basically, what he just did there, that line is great. And again, like as you're watching, you can kind of look at how my performance is and how also turbo's performance is by okay like there's the line that he's hooked how is that track cam looking are people struggling are they having issues themselves or is it an issue with the train bunching or kind of collapsing in on itself and that's what i really like to see this video i mean it is very fun to watch in general but it's also uh very helpful to see what those effects could be and especially if maybe you're someone that likes to lead a little bit more you're not going to have that uh, that view. I mean, I don't even have that view, right? And that's actually, I just want to say like this series has been really helpful for me because I kind of have the time to pick apart what I'm doing wrong and, and see it and definitely explain it to you guys. The more I kind of understand what I need to do and what I'm making mistakes on, hopefully that helps you guys out. And then of course, like it helps me and I kind of bring that to the next, the next weekend. So I'm a really big fan of like continuous and uh, iterative improvement. So really grateful for everyone watching the series so far and being a part of it but now we are back to the good old clutch kickers fun map as always now one thing i noticed i have been thinking a lot about my past couple videos regarding the lines here now turbo seems to have the lines down now my ego wants to say like there's a better line but it does seem like his line is really good and especially for that inside zone where I said it gets a little uh, tight. He has a really good line that sets you up. Uh, I think it's going to transition here to a different run. But check this out here. So we run the outside. I think typically he goes a little bit in and see, look, he's transitioning in the middle of this section. And then boom. Like, I think I might have taken that a little bit rough. But the line that he's taking there is really a good line. Like, I, I would definitely maybe even watch this back a couple times, this clutch kicker section just kind of look at the lines that he's taking i need to practice this track more I, I feel like every time i feel that i understand the track and i'm getting lines better there's always like more and more room for improvement so maybe it's a me issue but i definitely feel like it, this there's a lot of room to improve on this track even though it is uh quite often uh driven driven often now we're chasing our good friend nando's here in the lead Good to see him playing a set of course and not Fortnite for once. Really good line right there. Pretty consistent overall. And again, you can judge myself or his lead or anyone's lead really by looking at that train and it looked like it was pretty healthy. Here again, look at Turbo's line. Middle, I take it a little bit shallow. And because he takes like this, that corner, I always feel like, I think what I was saying last time, you know, I'm, I'll, do I clutch kick? Do I e-brake? I'm not too sure. It feels just really tough. His line actually opens that up a little bit. So not to uh, overstate that he has a good line, but I just want to make sure I'm kind of saying that out loud because I was thinking it the entire time I was on that track and I was definitely learning quite a lot. 
But now we are moving to Shinjuku Cart Night. Now it's crazy, guys. Like, the amount of people that have actually been wanting to drive this track. And as a reminder, the way that our weekends work every hour, we do a vote, a majority vote to see what track we want to run with, uh, you know, different options to see what people are feeling, what they want to drive on. And Shinjuku just keeps coming up and it's really cool. It, it's a little bit more of a technical track, has its moments, has its fun moments, has, have its, has its tough moments, excuse me. But it is very fun as long as you don't stare at the pillars for too long. But here, Turbo, they're on a pretty decent line. I'm having a little bit of trouble. I think it's a me issue overall. I thought it was nice, though, too. Like, check out after this ramp. Look at the uh, reflections off his car. I've been thinking, like, it almost is, like, too shiny, right? Like, no one's car is that shiny. It looks nice, though. But, yeah, here, that little middle section, I'm still not too sure on how to take it. Uh, really like one thing maybe I would comment on though, just thinking about it is like when you're following someone and maybe this sounds silly to some of you, but, uh, and I, and I, I okay, this is what I'm going to say. I've noticed it myself where there are some times where I kind of just like, mm, like AFK kind of like chase someone. Like I'm not really like paying attention other than, you know, really maybe my proximity, but really one thing I would recommend a lot of people to do, especially those of you that are looking to improve and, and get better is like, it sounds weird to say, but like actively chasing someone, right? So like, yeah, you're chasing them, but are you kind of thinking about like how and why they're taking certain lines or what parts they're maybe making uncomfortable for you? Or maybe if you're in like a third or fourth position, like, oh yeah, like look at the lead. Like you'll be looking at the third car or the second car, you know, whatever car in front of you, but still thinking about the lead, like, oh yeah, it was interesting. He took the line or they took the line like that. And then, you know, I, all of a sudden, like the train just started like smashing into each other. I think that's really helpful. And, and that's like a really easy way, arguably to improve is just like actively being a participant and thinking about those things versus just like, um, you know, getting doors. But hey, at the same time, man, like the most important thing about drifting is that you enjoy it and you're having fun. And if that's not happening, then, you know, definitely I would focus on that through all this other stuff. If you're having fun, that's all that matters. So now we are moving to Mihon and I'm actually kind of somewhat surprised we have not seen it on this series. I actually had the pleasure of driving a replica track of this track here in Arizona called Desert Mihon. A uh, really fun track, really crazy driving. I'm assuming that this is like a lot, like it, it was a one to one ratio of the track, but uh, yeah, driving this, it it's definitely crazy. Right here, like initiating a little bit late. I know IRL, I was terrified of that wall. So uh, <laughs> I basically initiated after the wall opened up, but here I have the flexibility of being a little bit more aggressive. And these, uh, these zones definitely feel a little bit tight, but the more I've gotten comfortable, just like I say with most of these technical, and again, it seems like more of these Japanese style tracks or literally, uh, tracks in Japan, they feel like you really get rewarded for good lines and it feels very frustrating when you don't have the right line. So here we're following our boy P3. He had a pretty good lead run, just trying to stay on his door, not cut too many of these lines. It, it looks pretty good so far. A little bit late on quite a few of these transitions, but just trying to stay near him. Now, I've been trying to test. I don't know if it's good or bad. The train reaction there was kind of bad, but I've been testing a left foot brake versus an e brake. I almost feel like if you just do like a quick little e brake on that really tight corner, it ends up being okay without too big of an issue. Someone just had a massive crash there. But yeah, here I am just uh, just focusing on on that chase. You can see I got a little bit too aggressive and I was way out of position. Ended up having to not only pull a little bit of procs away from him, but had a late transition, which of course like I've always continued to harp on, messes up the rest of the train. Here we have Mods and Unlimited, who I feel like both of these drivers are very good with these more technical tracks. 
So pretty cool opportunity for me to be behind them. Again, just having a nice little flow here. Nothing too crazy. I think watching it back with you guys definitely need to work on uh, that transition timing. It seems like every single corner I'm late. Yeah, almost every single corner now that I have watched it. I guess we'll see on this one. Here as well, like I'm just trying to stay close, not hit them, but trying to initiate where they are. I was thinking like, is there videos out there? Maybe some Mihon clips of like big trains that maybe we could see like if they're all able to initiate at the same time or what that looks. I think the bigger the train, there's a little bit of a lag, but maybe that's obvious to some of you. Yeah, a, a lot of, sorry, I was thinking, I'm just watching a lot of these transitions are looking pretty late. And by a lot of these, I mean, basically all of them is kind of rough to rewatch. And here, just trying to stay on that outside zone. It's kind of hard to gauge. It, it definitely feels like to me, sometimes I go a little bit too shallow. Sometimes I definitely go wide right into the wall, but they're doing a really good job. Not only, I think they're hitting the right zones. I mean, definitely, I think they're hitting the right zones, but also being really consistent with those zone areas. But now we switch over to HT Rhythm and Flow. You guys know this track. I think this has actually been, well, Clutch Kickers as well, but this track has been in every single weekend recap video. Yeah, I think, I think that's true, man. But here we're uh, chasing Sniper and the name in front of him is kind of hard for read. Uh, maybe I need to start getting glasses, man. Maybe I'll start wearing them when I do these commentaries, but here are the same thing. Just trying to stay smooth and consistent knowing that I have this uh, actually two red arrows at least on my screen I always say guys when you see four red arrows you know it gets sweaty and this is definitely no exception here going on the outside as I always recommend and then into this I finally think I've gotten a little bit better about going on this outside zone you can see though uh, our friend mercenary there doing a lot better on that outside zone after the entry yeah it, it is crazy, man. Just definitely like re-watching this and seeing how late some of these uh, transitions are. Here, keeping up speed. Trying to stay close, not pushing it too hard. A little bit too close out of pool procs, which I think might have messed up some of the train, but I think the person behind me was adapting pretty well to my mistake here. Some pretty good runs, actually. I, I was watching back. There was actually a lot of, a lot of good runs. It... I think I said this earlier. It gets really hard to edit these, man. I, I want to make sure too, like a, a lot of the homies are getting some screen time if I can help it. But there's just so many good moments. Even this video, I, I even told myself, hey man, try to condense it as much as we can. Maybe a little bit more than you think is necessary. And I think uh, it's a 45 minute video. <laughs> so hopefully it's enjoyable. I do like watching them. I watch them back just to see how they, they end up. But here, again, unlimited back in the front, back at Motor Park. Kazal, Kazain, Kazain, Kazain. Okay. I just got to stop, man. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to figure out for our next video if I remember, if I can actually pronounce it correctly. But again, my focus here was stay close to him. Keep the transition timing as good as you can. And this was my biggest focus is trying to hit that properly. You can see I'm hitting a better line but I'm still really struggling on maintaining that speed. There definitely needs, I, I definitely tell myself on these videos and in general, like, hey man, we definitely got to talk about actually shifting gears, but I continue not to, so. I don't know what to say about that other than it's not super great. But you can see these outside zones definitely help you set up just like we talked about with CG Sequoia, uh, Sequoia Park. They set you up pretty well in all these different areas. I also noticed too, after this sweeper, some people were taking a little bit different of a line, but I feel like this line is a, like a really nice flowy one. I guess what I mean is this part right here. So after this outside zone, they're actually doing not a bad job of the uh, really tight corner. 
So right here, instead of going this little cut in and then transition, they actually go and follow the track lines. I guess that makes sense. I did it a couple times. It kind of felt awkward. I, could be could be a skill issue for sure, but it seems like a lot of people were running this line that we're running more than that one, and it felt pretty comfortable. But yeah, it, it, it was really fun. A lot of these clips actually had unlimited and mods just getting really, really nice tandems. Killing it on the track. I was just basically behind them being a cameraman, I think. And by I think, yeah, it definitely was. But again, I, I was just working on my own lines, just trying to be consistent with the proximity and, uh, you know, learning the lines a little bit better. So now we're on another map that you guys may... So first off, you might not have ever seen but definitely has only been on my stream a few times. This is Yamaga Tomorani. Tom I always just call it Yama because, you know, I can't pronounce anything. But our server was a little bit lighter. This is near the end of our Saturday stream. Asked, uh, you know, everyone in the server, hey, like, you guys want to try this Yama map? Seems like a lot of people actually know about this track. It's not really driven as much. I would really love to see this a little bit more in rotation it is a very fun track uh a very hot lap ish track i guess it's just really long but it's it's really fun you can see i was messing around a little bit with the i think it was the pure weather planner and i said it the fog i just feel like this track this is the vibe that it it needs it requires you know maybe it's just me but i don't know it's kind of cool but here I want to say I was struggling a little bit with my gear ratio. I don't remember when I had changed it, but this track definitely made me sweat. Uh, it, there's a lot of like little parts that are a little bit technical, but it's still really fun. And, and to me, I guess maybe I'll just say like the Togue maps. I like Togue maps, but some of them just seem like it's such a big skill gap at least from where i feel like i currently am and, and i haven't really done much togue if at all then when we get on those like really big crazy maps i feel like i struggle but i really feel like this map and uh i forget what it's called it's, it's like tlc togue circuit i think is the one i'm thinking of are a little bit easier and a little bit more comfortable but here i just want to talk about a little bit of this line this is actually I can't believe it's already been this long already and time has actually flown by uh but here basically as it looks here transition go you can go a little bit on the inside then go outside you can run this whole outside pretty easily i was really trying hard to keep a good proximity with unlimited now this part pretty much can take it outside now you have to be careful here if you're not careful, you're going to see to our left, there's literally no guardrail. So you go directly off the map, but taking that on a little bit of an inside corner feels like it seems like it feels like it helps. And then this part is crazy. These bumps are massive. I don't know if it does it justice here. You can kind of see my whole rig actually shake from those big bumps and the force feedback that I have. But yeah, big jump. You kind of have to uh, prepare yourself a little bit. And then here, just kind of following his lines. His lines are actually pretty much what I would recommend. But yeah, I, I wish I could comment a little bit more. I, I mean, I almost wish I would have put a, another run in here, but yeah, this track is super fun. If you're watching this, if you're a part of the server, man, definitely, if you guys enjoy it, feel free to recommend it on our rotations. But hey, man, it's just crazy. My mind is blown. It's already been already been about that time but i hope you guys are still loving the series uh definitely give me feedback on the graphics give me feedback on the fov it's been helpful for me i don't know if i should uh decrease it i guess a little bit more or if it's more comfortable here my goal is just realism as much as i can that that's all that i genuinely care about I actually was even thinking about revisiting the sounds like i turned down the, the tire squeal noise and a couple other things so I might revisit that too. We'll see. Uh, definitely open for any suggestions or feedback that you guys have. And 
And hopefully the video is a little bit higher quality than the last ones. Watching it over and editing it does seem like it made a pretty big difference. So other than that, boys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching the YouTube video. I hope to catch you on the stream this weekend. And if not on the stream, I will see you guys on the next YouTube video. Thank you guys so much. See you on the next one.